So by now, I've been messing with this piston project for about four months, trying to replicate this piston. And last night, I have the first replica that I've completed. With the exception of cutting the ring lands, I've gone through all the processes just to eliminate any problems I might run into. One of them I've discovered last night was boring the pin boss. I didn't have the right size drill bit, so I got close and used a boring bar and then reamed it with a hand reamer. And the pin works just to make sure I went ahead and spent the $35 for the exact bit, which turns out to be 4564, so which is not something I don't think most people have in their toolbox. But it's gonna be worth it because this project I need all the help I can get. I've got all these things stacked against me. So today I've taken another blank, put it on my mandrel, and cut it down to roughly the proper outside diameter. I have the advantage in this case. I've already bored the cylinder, so I know my cylinder bore, and I want three thousandths clearance in this. That's my guess, best guess. I'm just using my experience from the old bull taco days and the singles, and giving a piston a lot of clearance that's air cooled. This is technically a single. It's so compact. If in, in relationship to uh, say a four stroke small bore motorcycle, this is about like a Honda 80 or XR80. Those are 15 thousandths clearance. So yeah, I'm gonna err on the side of caution in this case. It's a lot easier just to make a new piston if everything, you know, if I get shaky on it later. The whole time I was bringing this down to a close diameter, I'm looking for voids and castings. So I have about 60 thousandths left before my final diameter. And I'm going to start taking 10 thousandths passes, hopefully five 10 thousandths passes, to make sure that the finish is going to turn out okay. Between each step of the 10 thousandths passes, I'll be redressing my cutter with a stone, uh, both, both surfaces, and top rake too to make it as sharp as possible and make nice clean curls. You'll see in the video that it's actually coming off in about three fine hairs. The aluminum is so gummy that it's, it's getting on the blade. So I'm gonna take my time and really have a good finish. This one turned out okay doing that method. So that's a good another reason to just go ahead and knock one out and, and see what problems I'm gonna have in the future. So stay tuned, here we go. looking pretty good. I'm going to start using uh, cutting fluid for a finer finish. I don't know if you guys watch AVE or Ave as I like to call him. Good old Uncle AVE. <laughs> but he has a thing called tap water and he uses it a lot. I, I have been able, unable to source that. It must be a Canadian thing. So let's see how this turns out. Uh, that racket you're hearing is me holding down my uh, threading gear because this machine is incredibly worn out and I have to hold it it's also, I don't think it really wants to run backwards, but see what you think. Run it, engage him. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna lay out how I'm gonna drill in the lathe for the wrist pin. You can see how thick the walls are on these castings. So when there's a little defect, like that little hole right there, I'm not real worried about it. The piston ports, or the port openings are in this area of the piston. This is more just support in the bore. The rings are gonna be up here in the thick part. So what I do is I take a caliper and I go right up on the edge and drop the piece down in two until it touches the boss. Transfer that back over, mark my line, then measure down from the center to the other side, split the difference. So you'll see a mark here and a mark here. And I've centered off the center of the piston here around and center punched it. So when I chuck this into the lathe, this will be where the center on the tailstock will, will feed into. 